Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Hippatios of Crete. And in the last episode, some interesting stuff happened right at the end there. As the Emperor named us not only his regent, but also as his spy master. Now that gives us some pretty good bonuses. If we had wanted to, we could very easily uh, murder the Emperor and take the regency here over his young son and heir. Prince Porphorios, who unfortunately has consumption, but as many of you agreed, that doesn't really make sense for our character Hippatios. He's not the type of person who would murder somebody under these circumstances. I don't think that means that he wouldn't murder anybody, and I'm going to bring something up in just a moment, but I don't think he would murder somebody like the Emperor or somebody without like a very good reason to do so and he doesn't really have a reason to to murder the emperor like that he's not a power hungry character hippotheos is but he will do what needs to be done and he takes his duty seriously and his duty is to expand the the empire that's what his role is within within the emperor his own personal goal is to essentially develop and spread the hellenic faith that's something that he personally cares about and his family was kind of raised to to do but in terms of his role within the empire here he is a general he is a warrior he is a character who the emperor sends out to expand these lands here in italy for example we were conquering kind of our way up through these new broken off italian city states or here in the north coast of africa potentially here in the lands of egypt and that brings me up to this kind of interesting thing. So obviously we're not gonna murder the Emperor. I think everybody agreed on that, that that was not something that our character would do. But what about this? As we are our liege's spy master, that gives us big bonuses here to our hostile scheme power and hostile scheme success chance, really big bonuses. And the Emperor made us his spy master. We're a dutiful character. We need to do our job as the spy master. Well, what does that mean? That means essentially being the, you know, the spy master against the empire's enemies, one of which is potentially Egypt here. And due to our dual role as kind of a conqueror for the empire and now the spy master, perhaps the emperor wishes us to put those both into play. I think that this makes a little bit more sense and you'll see that we do have a few different options here we could potentially send our agents to arrange the death of one of the emperor's powerful potential enemies here in egypt like obviously the emperor wants to expand to gain hold of the old roman lands that's kind of the eastern roman empire's whole thing is getting the roman lands back together so if we are tasked to do so then then we need to use all the tools at our disposal. We are a dutiful character. Keep that in mind. And the tools at our disposal right now are essentially using the spies, the agents, the murderers at our disposal, along with our armies to expand the empire. So we have this option here. We could kill Sultan Ali. Pretty good chance of that. But we do have a few other options first. Now, You'll notice that when we wish to declare war, we have a pretty powerful bunch of alliances here. In the in the off screen, I did make a few more small alliances. Uh, I believe I got an alliance here with Zaporzhia, which is uh, you'll notice that the um, M the Khazar the Khazar Khanate, yeah, Khazar Khanate. Uh, did completely dissolve. I don't know if I brought this up in one of the previous episodes, but it completely dissolved and spread into all of these smaller states, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and honestly, the Khazar Khanate isn't that historically ba well based. So, in any case, uh, that's a minor, minor group, but um, or gripe, I should say. Yeah, that's that makes more sense. <laughs> Um, but we did gain ourselves an alliance here with Khan Kundak, and that's a pretty powerful alliance. He's just the most powerful of the Khazar successor states, and he's got, he's not very far away from us. 
he's quite powerful. He's a good man. Like you'll notice gregarious and humble and trusting. He's a hunter as well. This is a character we could easily get along with. And I could imagine that we would have some dealings here that would be favorable. So we arranged a betrothal between his heir and our daughter, Princess Helen, the beautiful girl here who is the daughter of our uh, um, concubine here. So I think that is perfectly fine. We did dedicate our second eldest daughter, Rakiza, here to the faith. I noticed that she was zealous and pensive and and uh, taking the learning ship, the learning education. So I thought that that made a lot of sense. We have kind of a habit of dedicating people in our family to the faith. So I thought we would keep up that tradition. And then we got a marriage between Princess Hestiana to Count Trifon of Rosanos. It, he is from the house of Limpadares, which is descended from our father's good friend Gabriel, as well as the brave Duke Hectorios, who was a friend of ours. Don't forget that. So, uh, so I think that marriage makes sense. It's not a great alliance or anything, but it just makes sense for the character because House Limpadares, despite rising up, uh, two times here under the guise of Gabriel Limpadares, he was he was just a child, really. He, you know, was essentially he had a regency, so it wasn't him doing it himself it was his regent so which was not trifon i don't believe so i think it's uh perfectly acceptable that we get that marriage alliance there uh you'll actually notice that his brother died in his sleep indeed at age 17 very strange but uh you know our niece despotisa nicarete she does what she does so that's that's well and well and good there so uh and i also just want to point out that there is a massive viking army that is besieging constantinople <laughs> the ones who were trying to take this little bit of crimea here are are in the capital so hopefully the army will be able to stop them that's not under our control that's up to the marshal duke gerasimus so We'll see what he can do. Duke Gerasimus the Bloody. Yikes, this guy's kind of kind of crazy. Good warrior, though. Uh, we'll see if he can stop this barbarian horde from sieging down Constantinople, but it's uh, that's not up to us. We are the spy masters. So what do we do? Like I said, we do have the possibility of murdering Sultan Ali the Jolly. <laughs> Feel bad about that, but... But what might be a little bit more important, and as I was pointing out and then got distracted. He's got a lot of troops, not necessarily personally. He's got quite a few personally, but it's his strong alliance here with Malik Kanun of Blemia that makes things very, very difficult here because the Malik has a good 3000 troops. That's adding a lot there. Um, he has a vassal here, uh, Emira Rahima, and that alliance we might want to deal with too. But we can potentially break off the alliance here, which is from the marriage between his son and this woman right here, Zilgum Bint Kanun, who is vengeful, arbitrary, and sadistic. A horrible person. I think we can all agree. And as you can see, pretty good chance of murdering a, an accident happening, we shall say. And considering that this is in the best interests of the Empire, I think that this is something that we might do. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to deal with Sultan Ali after, but we need to break this alliance first. We need to get Blemia away, and then we can start to think about what we're going to do. Because we are very close to, uh, to reforming the faith. We can definitely do it within our lifetime. We just need to get the piety we need, and we need to get the the last trait here, which we're going to get right away. As you can see, we are almost at the learning we need to get to profit here. I don't know if we're going to continue all the way down to theologian. Probably not. I don't 
Yeah, I don't really... Eh, maybe. Actually, we, we might even. I don't know if we need to go back to the military tree right away, but in any case, we need about 2,500 or no, about 1,500 more piety, maybe maybe a 2,000. Uh, how are we going to get that? Well, we brought our raiding forces back and that allows us to do a pilgrimage. So if we plan a pilgrimage, say to Carthage, which I think is a good option, you'll see that we have just enough money to take care of that and it's a perfectly safe journey. And even better, um, you'll see that within our entourage, uh, we are going to have, well, not only Rikiza, who is dedicated to the faith, so she'll learn something from that, but also Prince Odysseus will come as well. So this is a good, and Trifon, he's going to come. He's going to be protecting us. We've got Sybil Kiriaki, of course, she's going to come. Anatolios, our caravan master. And Princess Ariadne, our sister, is going to join us as well. So it's a nice little entourage we have. And I think we are going to want to pick the zealotry option there so that we can max out the amount of piety. We're going to do this. Our spies are going to go do their thing here in Egypt. We're going to go do our thing over in Carthage and get that pilgrimage in. So the journey begins as we set sail from Iraklio and hopefully we'll get some good events when we get there. Maybe the gods will finally start favoring our dynasty here. The emperor is still facing, you know, some troubles here, but we, you know, our job is, you know, it's remote work, you know, we're... We send our spies out to go and do the various things, but really it is a, it's a job that we don't necessarily need to be in the capital for, I suppose, at, at the moment anyways. Oh, she's getting a little feisty here. I call on your alliance to join me in the Magnagration Conquest of Apulia. She's going up against Benevento. Heck yeah, good job on you. Oh no, but, oh, let's see. The blurring of war horns have reached me even as I am en route to Carthage. Hmm, I'm loath to, loath to send my guests home. The importance of this conflict cannot be underestimated. Perhaps it would be best to focus. I can manage things from here. Yeah, we don't need to deal with this. We have warriors and generals who can manage this war for us. It's an alliance war. If somebody was attacking us directly, sure, I would send in our uh, our, our, I would send us in ourselves, but I'm pretty sure Count Comitas can easily assist us or assist our niece in this war here. So we're going to raise up all of our troops and then we shall, yeah, indeed just uh, assist in the fight here. Can we go and just fight their army? I mean, I don't really necessarily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we will presumably win this one, so. I don't think we need to worry too much about that. We'll lose some troops, but, you know, that's going to make this war go a lot easier. Meanwhile, here we are en route to to Cartagena. Cartagena. My God, I'll never pronounce that one right. It was not what Sheikh Zachariah was hoping to find by spying on secret conversations, but discovering the truth about Sultana Zvina does not hurt. Perhaps this can help my effort. We learn of Sultan Z Sultana Zvina's unbeliever secret. Oh, interesting. Let's, uh, can we use, like, blackmail her? Ooh. Yeah, we can gain the weak hook. She might accept the blackmail. All right, that could be, that could be helpful here, so... Let's take a look at our pilgrimage here. One more day, and there we are. I'm finally here, body and soul, at the great temple of Carthage. As the flamen offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that had to happen for the gods to bring me here at this moment in time. I have walked the holy path. So we gain the trait pilgrim. Uh, we lose some stress. <gasps> we are going to be at one stress after this. So there we go. You'll... Looks like... Yeah, and see, our son gets the pilgrim trade as well. So I think that's pretty cool that he's going to have, uh, that he got to go on a pilgrimage at such a young age. 
As I stroll around the streets of Carthage, I stop in front of a small temple. The building is comparatively bland and humble, but a small crowd of pilgrims has gathered in front of it. When I move in closer, I realize that they are scratching their heads trying to make sense of the plaque next to the one guardian, next to one of the guardian statues written in a foreign language. This could be an opportunity to do my fellow pilgrims a service. I will translate it for you all, or hey, this hardly seems worth it. Oh, we have 5% chance of gaining the trait Sculler. That would be nice. Hmm, well, it's only a 5% chance, but we're going to try it. Blackmail refuse. Uh, a threat was made. There can only be one, but one outcome. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll reveal it then. We have exposed her doubts about Allah. Yikes. It's uh, unfortunate for her so we're gonna let this continue actually while we do that we should probably check on our army here oh good <laughs> they're doing they're doing fine here yeah looks like Trifon Solomon oh my god he's just he is a good man and just a strong a strong warrior he he does what uh he does what needs to be done there so looks like we won that fight we're gonna go in and might as well siege uh Apulia itself here, so. Greetings, my liege. I have discovered that Count Jacques's inherited contract obliges him to more than you have collected. Time to right this wrong. Oh, sweet, we can increase the feudal taxes. Oh, we might as well. A pilgrim puts down a votive doll before the altar, bowing her head. I see Kiriaki blessing her and muttering something in my ear. Holy, I managed to hear. The flamen makes a gesture. Do you also bring something to have blessed, dear despot? Please, make my prized ring more pious. Hmm, let everyone see the fame of my prized ring. I have better things to do with my gold. Hmm, <laughs> prized ring durability increased by 10. Oh, that's nice. Um, Let's see, we want to increase our piety here. So yeah, let's make, let's have our ring blessed by the flamens and blessed by the gods indeed i love that our son odysseus is here joining us on this that's that's really cool to me oh it looks like we're gonna catch their army one more time here <laughs> i like that we can just like let trifon handle things here and we just don't even have to worry about it. like that fight is is fine we can put this screen up things are gonna be good over there so Oh, we've been removed from the position of the spy master. How dare he? Huh. What does that do to our... Oh, our plot's still quite good, though. 14 agents. Yeah, our agents aren't going to stop. So uh, we'll, we'll still be able to potentially break off that alliance. So the emperor, uh, maybe he was annoyed that we went on this pilgrimage, but, you know... It is, uh, it is what it is. The pilgrimage was important to us. As I walk into the temple, and, and honestly, so we are a dutiful character, but we have m multiple conflicting duties, and one of the duties is as the leader of the Hellenic faith. So, you know, I think that, I think it makes sense that we would um, prioritize that as well, so... Uh, as I walk into the temple, a formidable guilt comes upon me. The light illuminating the altar like a summer, sunny summer day is so dense that I feel like I could touch it. What kind of life am I living? What kind of despot could I be? Or father or son? I, if I don't change my drunkard nature, the only light I'll see will be that of the fire of Hades. Here, I am born a new man, so we lose the trait drunkard. We'll gain some stress. I'm fine with that. And our, our, our uh, pilgrimage becomes more pious. So, yeah, all right. Let's, there we go. So we're not a drunkard anymore. Good on us. You know, we've gotten, we've gotten over our addiction to the bottle. Ooh, and look at this. We can get the profit uh, trait right now. So there we go. Not going to bother looking at those battles. Ooh, the twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. Zeus knows that I was cursed the day I met Sultan Ablarion. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. He is dead. He died. He succumbed to fatal ap uh, epilepsy. So, not one day too soon. Well, Sultan Ablarion the Merciful 
is dead, and his son, Sultan Ibrahim ibn Ablarion Aglabid, now takes the throne. And he is not very powerful. That is for, <laughs> for sure there. But he's not our... Oh, and he's like, he's wheezing. He's not very healthy. See how long he lasts. Uh, that is a good question. We shall, we shall indeed see how long he lasts. Our pilgrimage continues fine. Let's take a look at the activity log. So uh, we found a translator. Oh yeah, look at this. We're gaining so many things. We led a communal prayer. We bonded with our sister over the spared, shared journey. Anatolio spent time in prayer. We organized a religious procession. Uh, re we repented. More processions. Yeah, we're like... I mean, we are like essentially like one of the leaders of the faith. Oh, and we gained the wise man trait. Pilgrimage completed. As our time at this sacred site draws to an end, I feel reassured that while I may not have been the most pious pilgrim out there, I've proven my dedication to the Thunderer in more ways than one. This being my first pilgrimage, and while no pilgrimage is exactly alike, I feel confident that I am more familiar with what to expect from this type of spiritual journey in the future. Time to start my journey back home. There we go. We gain a bunch of good traits. And this is, yeah, exactly what we want to see. Did we become a wise man? We doesn't look like it, but we gained a lot of piety by doing that. So we can finish our pilgrimage here. And there we go. What in the world has happened to my son Odysseus? He is all bruised and beaten, and he refuses to name who did this to him. Was it an older child? Or did he pester a noble to the point of fury? It seems as even flickering shadows make him jump in fear. Perhaps the poor boy sees his assailant in them. He's always looking over his shoulders, always alert. He could become paranoid. Avoid people and you will be safe. You should have run away. No, obviously we don't want him to be craven. Paranoid. Ugh, that's not a good, that's not a good trait. Shy though? Hmm. Shy. Diplomacy, but learning, attraction, opinion, personal scheme power. Travel safety. Oh, this is a tough one. Obviously, Craven not is is not a choice here for our character at least. But paranoid. What does that? He gains more stress, but his dreads better. Vassal opinions lower. Scheme discovery chance plus ten percent. Hmm. Travel speed is down. Uh, do we want him to be an intriguey type character or? I mean, we're gregarious, so I don't think we would say to avoid people. I think Paranoid's the only one that makes sense here for our character, so. So be it. That is what it is. Not the best trait, but hopefully he'll gain a few other ones. Like, if he gains Diligent and Gregarious or something like that, it should be fine. Oh, and there we go. We just finished off their army. Rikiza's pregnant again? You're 42 years old, woman. My god. I mean, you know, we're not drunkard anymore, so obviously we're better able to, to, you know, manage things, so to speak. So there we go. We're and here we are about to return home. So the siege here is going well and good. Let's see how our scheme here. 95% chance, four more months. See how this all plays out in the very near future here. We return from our pilgrimage. It was a long one, but while much remains the same, something has changed in how the Flamens treat me. I've undergone the journey of a holy man, and they insist it has changed something about me, whether I can see it or not. So there we go. We have the piety we need to get like the very most basic reformation here but we're gonna need a little bit more but luckily we have some time because we still can't reform until we take the third holy site which we could try to take it from servia but we would have to forge a claim we'd have to take our sybil off of converting attica which i don't want to do i think i just want to take alexandria i'm just I'm set on taking that place. And I think we're going to be able to get it soon. 
accosted. My agents have scheduled a journey for Zilgum, which will take them through Dark Woods. All that is missing is the band of thugs that will tragically slay her in a highway robbery gone wrong. I can already imagine her blood. Yeah, okay. The wilderness can be such a dangerous place. Yeah, 95% chance. Let us hope that it goes well. My attempt on her life has been thwarted. My hired thug thugs failed to overpower her retinue. At least they have been slayed to the last man. Uh, with no one left to talk, they have been assumed to be nothing but simple bandits. If at first you don't succeed, indeed, I think we're, I think we're gonna make another attempt at it. We do need to. to we gotta break that alliance. Greetings, despot Hippatios of Crete. Who are you? Muammar Abililad. I've heard of your disputes with that cold-hearted sultan, Sultan Ibrahim of Aglabid. A most contemptible excuse for a man. Given our mutual interests, I'm sure we will get along well. Ah, uh, he's got a rival. I eagerly await to discuss this opportunity further. Uh, I don't want to make friends with this man because he's old and he's going to die. Messengers are unreliable. Hmm. This is a low play by a low player. You're no friend friend of mine, Muammar. Hmm. What should we do here? Forward the letter to Sultan Ibrahim. Ah, you know, maybe this could be the start of a peace with Ibrahim here. We shall see. Uh, Nicarete won her war, so there we go. Look, she took Apulia. So, not bad at all. We can disband our army. And what do we have here? Princess Ants. Uh, Ansel Perga is dear to me. Would you let her go in return for 50 gold pieces? Your wife? Indeed, I would let her go for that sum of money. Meet Piers off to play. My daughter Zenobia, along with Rakiza and the other children, have been invited to a gathering of Piers by Duchess Valeria. They are packed and ready. Ugh, do we let them go? Uh, I suppose. Can we really just keep... <laughs> Look at him. He just doesn't like this idea. Can we really keep our children just cooped up in Crete? Or do we have to go and and let them... Let them go and visit Duchess of Valyria here in Anatolicon? That's not a far journey. You know, like, they only really have to sail just over to here. That's not far at all. Surely they'll be okay. Very well. We'll accept it this time. Hopefully nothing horrific happens to them. He's on a ship, but oh my god, I'm terrified now, considering the curse that has affected our dynasty. Still got a pretty good shot at this one, so. Oh, Rikiza, you have been so brave, so strong. Words cannot describe my love for you, and now we have a perfect little son. Who will you become, my child, and what shall I call you? Hmm, there are a few options, and I'm actually going to go back and take a look at some of the suggestions that you guys had made in that previous video for a name for our son here, so give me just a moment. So I have decided upon the name Heraclius, which is one of the names that was suggested in the chat, and it has some interesting kind of historical basis with uh, one of the, the emperors of Rome, I believe, connected with, uh, I believe it was defeating the Sassanids and conquering Egypt, bringing it all back to uh, Roman rule or something along those lines. I'm probably not 100% correct on that. I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comments. But also, it's a good name, you know, considering that we're ruling Heracleon here and just in general. It is a very fitting one, so I think we'll go with that for our young son here. Does he have any good traits? Hey, he's got uh, he's got the quick trait, so that's uh, not so bad. Uh, obviously, this means that our lands are going to get split up a little bit more, but luckily, I and I did I do know this for a fact that we won't lose these lands once our character dies. Our, our other sons will gain these duchies in the counties here, but they will be vassals to Odysseus as long as we don't take enough to form a kingdom. If we take enough to form a kingdom, like if we take Achaia or uh, Achaia, 
we we would lose those lands. They would form a kingdom on our death that would be ruled by our second son, presumably. So we do need to keep that in mind. If we spread out our lands, they're all going to remain under the despotate of Greeks. So just something to consider. And wow, look, we actually have money. We, we actually have money for once. Our murder scheme continues here, so I think we're just going to continue to build up our money. I wonder if we can go and do some raiding again. Maybe we can raid Apulia here to gain even more, because I do want to increase the size of our levies before we go into war. So, uh, in fact, I'll probably increase the size right here. What What is going to be our best bet to go up against Egypt? What kind of levies is he packing here? He's got a lot of, he's got a ton of heavy footmen here, or heavy infantry. So they're countered by spearmen and, no, they counter spearmen. And what are they countered by? Uh, let's take a look here. Who do you counter? It's probably archers, right? Archers that counter heavy footmen here. No, they counter skirmishers. Knights can uh, get archers, footmen can do spearmen, spearmen can do that. So we don't actually have a, a regiment that can deal with his armored footmen. That Oh, what light footmen. That's probably what it is, right? Yeah, so light footmen deals with heavy infantry. Do we get rid of our pikemen and switch it over to to skirmishers in order to yeah he doesn't have any they don't have a lot of horsemen so our our pikemen are not doing us very much good so i'm gonna disband you and we're gonna create a skirmisher regiment a light footman regiment here it's not gonna cost us too much money and we're gonna increase your size up to size four that should be lots uh it didn't even cost us that much money honestly and we're going to make all that money back up because we're going to raise up all of our forces as raiders. And we're going to go here and uh, raid the lands of the guys that we just beat up in that fight. So we'll go and take these counties here, 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 and here. That'll bring us back basically all the money that we just spent on those guys. So that should be pretty ideal for us. And yeah, we'll, we're going to be well set up here to actually deal with the Egyptians. If we can break that alliance, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to win the fight. One of my agents has acquired a deadly spider and arranged for a servant to hide it in her bed before dark. All they need is my go ahead. I hope you're not afraid of spiders, Zilgum. We'll take some stress, but uh, because we're gregarious, so okay. Uh... Let's hope that this time it is successful. There we go. Zilgum is dead by the lethal bite of a deadly spider. The spider struck not long after she retired to her chambers, and although guards were called, no one could do a thing to save her. Thankfully, spiders do not talk, so the attack cannot be traced back to me. Ah, and Jacou did uh, come of age. His energetic nature was thought to be a sign of affinity for war and combat, but per perhaps it was simply unruliness. He's only developed a basic understanding, so he's eh, not really that he's not really that good. But uh, the line of Mendoza will continue. So Malik Kanun and you became rivals when a feud broke out between House Kanunid and Argeus. I'm told, huh? I'm told Malik Anun, the contemptible swain, has vowed the Argeus to be eternal enemies of his family. This has actually raised some hackles. Oh, the feeling is mutual. Reciprocate the feud. He becomes our nemesis. How childish. Um. Hmm. <laughs> so I think for the sake of the story, we are going to do this feud because I think it just makes things more interesting. It doesn't seem completely out of character either. Uh, so, you know, he has, they have this feud because they know, maybe they, yeah, they have these strong suspicions. They know that we're going, want to conquer Egypt. And he, you know, has a good reason to 
to suspect maybe that we were responsible for this. So we're going to do that. I think it's just going to make things a little bit more interesting going forward, especially once we do conquer Egypt, because as you can see, they no longer have that alliance with Blemia. With Blemia. So if we were to declare war, we might actually have a chance at defeating them. We will find out in the next episode. We've got some preparations to make in the meantime, and the Empire is still kind of in chaos, but things look to be turning a little bit in our favor, as you can see. So, leave your comments down below, and I will see you in the next episode.